Hello my dear friends, welcome to my YouTube channel that is learning and programming with Chetan. Today in this particular video, we will going to discuss about object and classes in Java. And this is one of the most important topic for those who are interested in learning and programming in Java language. So let us start with our first topic, what is class? So a class is a prototype, template or blueprint for an object. That is, it is used to define the properties and behavior of an object and a class is a logical entity. Now, let us try to understand about objects in Java. So, an object is a real world entity which can have properties and behaviors and it should also have an identity. And this identity is used by Java Virtual Machine so that it can uniquely identify an object in a memory. And the various examples of objects are like bike, book, employee object, we can have student object and as I have told you that an object is a real world entity so everything we can see around us is an object. Object is an instance of a class and a class can have multiple objects. Also as we have discussed earlier that a class is an logical entity that is it is used to define a properties and behavior of an object and there is no memory allocated for a class but if we talk about object then object is both physical as well as logical entity because it is physically present in a memory now before moving further let us try to understand about class and object by using a real life example my dear friends in order to explain you the concept of class and object I have taken a most recent topic that is coronavirus. So let us try to understand the concept of classes and objects by this coronavirus example. Now we have a class with the name virus. Class is used to define the properties and behavior of an object. So in our virus class we have properties and behaviors. Now the various properties are name of virus, type of virus and is vaccine available for a virus and it can have various behaviors like its spread process, treatment process and we also have one more function that is symptoms. So these are various behaviors and properties of an virus class. As we have already discussed that a class can have multiple objects. So for our virus class we have various objects like coronavirus, swine flu virus and dengue virus. In a later part of a video we will try to understand that how we can create a corona object by using virus class by the help of a program. Now my dear friends let us discuss about a declaration of a class in Java. Now before declaration let us first see that what all a class can contain. So a class can have fields, a class can contain methods and we can also have blocks inside class and a class also contain constructors. Now let us see that how we can declare a class in Java programming language. So a class can be declared by using a keyword class that is class and this is class name and inside braces we define fields, methods, the class also contain blocks and constructors. So this is about a declaration of a class. Now let us see that what is instance variable in Java. So as we have discussed that an object is an instance of a class. Now all the fields which is declared inside a class is also known as instance variables because it belongs to a instance of a class that is it belongs to an object and also memory is allocated for these instance variables now let us discuss about object creation in java programming language now there are various methods of creation of objects in java we can create object by using new keyword we can also create an object by using new instance method of a class we can use clone method which is present inside object class for creation of object. We can also use deserialization process and factory method for creation of objects. So in this tutorial we will going to discuss about object creation by using new keyword. And all these four topics we will discuss in separate video in detail. Now my dear friend let us discuss that how we can create an object by using a new keyword and also we will discuss that how we can initialize an object. So there are various methods of initializing an object. So let us start with an object initialization by using reference variable method. So my dear friends here I have used an Eclipse IDE for writing, compiling and executing my Java program. So I have created a Java project with the name tutorial project 
and inside tutorial project i have created various classes like bike.java student.java and virus.java and all these classes are present inside com.tutorial package and for testing purpose i have created a classes with the name test bike.java test student.java and test virus.java inside my package com.tutorial.test we will discuss about packages in a separate video now let us try to understand our object initialization by using reference variable method so in our bike.java class we have declared our class by using a keyword class and public is an access specifier now inside our bike class i have defined two fields as name and color these fields are also known as instance variables now my dear friends let us see that how we can create an object by using new keyword and we will also discuss that how we can initialize an object by using reference variable method now inside my test by class i have defined a main method in our previous video we have already understand that this main method is called by jvm at runtime now in this statement we are creating our object by using new keyword so here bike is my class name and bike one is my reference variable name and new is a keyword which is used to create an object inside a memory and this is our default constructor we will discuss about constructor in detail in our separate video so this bike one is a reference variable which is used to refer our object which is created inside a heap memory now let us initialize our object so in my bike class i have two fields name and color so here i am assigning a value to my fields or to my reference variables so bike one dot name i have given value as apache and its color is black and here we are using a print statement so that we can see our output on console we already discussed about system dot out dot println method in our previous video so let us try to run this program so here you can see that when i am printing the field of my object bike one then it is giving me the value as apache and when i am printing the value of our field color then we are getting it as black so this is the way of initializing our object by using reference variable method now let's see that how we can initialize our object by using a method so i have created a student or java class now inside our student class i have created two fields name and roll number and their scope is private which means that it is accessible only inside our student class now our name field is of type string and our roll number field is of type int string and int are a data type in java we will discuss about data types in detail in a separate video now my dear friends here we have used various methods for setting our fields like we have set roll number field and set name field and to access this field values outside the class we have getter method i have also created a print detail method which is of type void which means that this method will not return any value and its scope is public that is it is accessible outside our class and inside this method i am printing the values of our fields now let us see that how we can initialize our object by using a method inside our test java class i have created a main method and here you can see that we are creating our object by using a new keyword so student1 is a reference variable which is pointing to an object which is created in a heap memory now you can see in these two statements we are initializing our object by using methods that is we have used set name and set rule number method to assign the values to an object and here i am printing the value of my field which is associated to an student object now my dear friends as we have discussed that a class can have multiple object that is if we create one class then we can have thousands or millions of objects for a class so here you can see that i am creating another object with a reference variable as a student2 which is of type student and here again we are initializing the value of our fields by using a method and again we are printing the values now let us try to run this method so here you can see the details of our student1 object 
and this is the details of our student object now let us discuss that how we can initialize our object by using constructor method while explaining you about classes and object we have seen that we have a class virus and it can have various objects like corona dengue and swine flu so now we will see that how we can initialize our object by using constructor method for our virus class and corona object so my dear friends here i have created a class with the name virus and inside our virus class we have created a field as name type and is vaccine available and it is of type boolean which means that it can accept two values either true or false so my dear friends here you can just see that how we can initialize our object by using constructor and we will discuss about constructor in detail in a separate video so let me briefly explain you about constructor so constructor is used to initialize our object or it is used to construct an object now constructor can be of default type and parameterized type so here we have declared a parameterized constructor with its parameter as name type and is vaccine available and inside this we are assigning a values to our fields and this is my print detail method which is used to print the various details of an object now inside our test virus class i am creating an object of our virus class with the reference variable as virus1 and here we have used a new keyword and this is our parameterized constructor so inside our parameterized constructor we are passing the virus name as corona and its type is respiratory virus and is vaccine available its value is false so inside a parameterized constructor object will get initialized and inside our print detail method we are printing the values of our fields now let me run our virus class so here you can see that a values is assigned to our virus one object with name as corona its type as respiratory virus and is vaccine available its value is false so my dear friends here you have seen various methods of object initialization now let us discuss our last topic that how memory is allocated to an object i will try to explain you that how a memory is allocated to an object for our test student class so here we have created a two objects student 1 and student 2 and we have assigned values to them now let us see that how memory is allocated for student 1 and student 2 object so here you can see that we have two memories that is stack memory and heap memory and we have created two reference variable student 1 and student 2 now let us see what will happen when we will create an object student 1 so student 1 is a reference variable which is present inside our stack memory when we will create an object by using a new keyword then it will create an object inside our heap memory and here we have assigned the values to our field so you can see the name value is chetan and phone number value is 1 inside our heap memory similarly when we are creating our student to object and when we are assigning its field values then student to reference variable will be created inside stack memory and it is pointing to an object which is present inside a heap memory with its field values that is name equals to anand and roll number equals to 2 so here you can understand that whenever we create an object in java then a memory is allocated for an object inside a heap memory so my dear friends hope you are able to understand about objects and classes in java and we have seen that how we can declare a class and what is instance variables and we have also discussed about object creation by using new keyword and we have seen about object initialization by using various methods and hope you are able to understand that how memory is allocated for an object do like comment and subscribe my channel and click the bell icon for latest updates